Hello my keto peeps, it's Samaya and welcome back to my channel, I Don't Sugarcoat. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make one of my favorite muffins. It's a chocolate chocolate chip walnut muffin. So let's get started. Again, today's video is sponsored by Wholesome Provision. They are a company located right here in the US and they specialize in making keto friendly and low carb friendly products. Go on their website today and check out their catalog of low carb goods. I'm certain there's something on there that everyone will love. I personally love this stuff for baking, like their lupin flour and their sweeteners. They also have some spices and some chocolate chips and even some pre-made stuff if you're not looking to cook anything at all. I'll leave a link for their website in the description of today's video. Now let's jump into this recipe. Okay, so this is one of my favorite muffins. I, you know, I didn't used to be really big on chocolate, but since starting keto, I've come to really, really like like chocolate cake and chocolate muffins. So this is absolutely one of my favorites. Now this has a lot of ingredients. So I'm gonna try to remember everything, um, the measurements and all that, but. If I can't remember how much is in there, it'll definitely be in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin, we're gonna be adding 50 grams of some lupin flour to our bowl. And if you didn't see any of my other videos, my videos from now going forward, all my recipes will be done primarily in grams. You might still hear me say half a cup of this or that if it's not something that really, really needs to be weighed in grams. And that is to help you guys to be able to have more success when you make my recipes. Okay, now to this, I'm gonna be adding 80 grams of some wheat protein isolate, and this is the 8,000 version. So, you can use the 5500, but it does have more protein, so just be aware of that. Now to this, I'm gonna be adding 50 grams of some oat fiber. And next, I'm gonna be adding 52 grams of some coconut flour. Next, I'm gonna be adding 28 grams of some cocoa powder. You can use um, some cacao powder as well. I'm just using some cocoa powder today. I'm also gonna be adding in 20 grams of some vital wheat gluten. I'm gonna be adding one tablespoon of some baking powder. I'm gonna be adding one and a half teaspoon of some baking soda, one teaspoon of some espresso powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of ascorbic acid. Now that is used just as a preservative. If you don't wanna add it, you don't need to. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this whisk together, and then we are gonna set this aside and move on to our wet. Now to get started with our wet ingredients, I'm gonna add half a cup of some avocado oil, but you can use like coconut oil or whatever type of oil you prefer. I wouldn't suggest olive oil for the taste, but um, if that's all you have, you can go ahead and give it a try. Next, I'm gonna be adding in half a cup of some non-dairy milk. You guys, I, I can't even begin to tell you about the journey that I've been going on with making my own non-dairy milks. I'm gonna do a video about it, and I know you're probably wondering, what more could there be added to like making nut milks and all that type of stuff. But if you know anything about my channel, it's that I don't tend to do things the same as everybody else. So I'm definitely gonna be making a video about making nut milks and things like that. Mostly because that's gonna lead into some other videos like doing yogurts and things. And I'm telling you, you guys are gonna really, really love, I think you're really gonna love what I have to bring to the table when it comes to making nut milks and making non-dairy yogurts and things like that. But let's get back to this. Okay, so in here I have, this is my own milk that I've made. Um, this is a almond cashew blend that I'll be using today. You can use whatever kind you have on hand. And to this, I'm gonna be adding in 
half a cup of pure sweetener, but if you don't have pure, you're gonna wanna use one cup of whatever sweetener of your choice. Pure is two times the sweetness, so that's why I'm only using half a cup. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get this mixed up, and then we'll continue adding in our other ingredients. Okay, so now I'm gonna add in two eggs that have already been lightly beaten. I'm adding in one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I'm adding in one teaspoon of cake batter extract. Now, if you don't have that, you don't have to add it. I do feel as though it really helps um, with the taste of this recipe, but if you don't have it, it's totally fine. Okay, now with that added, I'm going to be adding two thirds of a cup of some um, Two Good yogurt here. Um, you could also do sour cream. I do this recipe with either or. Uh, since I didn't have any sour cream in the fridge, I opted for the yogurt. So you can use whichever one you prefer. And you're just gonna wanna mix this in on a low speed. Okay, now that all of our wet has been mixed together, I'm gonna start by adding in half of my dry and I'll get that nice and mixed in, and then I'll add in the other half. And now what I wanna do is, I have a cup of some um, sugar-free chocolate chips here, and these are the milk chocolate kind, but usually I would use the semi-sweet. I just don't have any right now. So I'm gonna add in about Oh, two thirds of a cup of these to my mix here because I wanna save some to put on top of my muffins. You know, maybe about three fourths of this cup I'm gonna be adding. And now to this, I have a half a cup of some chopped up walnuts and I'm gonna be adding that. And now we just wanna fold this into our batter here. Oh my gosh, you guys, this smells super good and it's totally making my mouth water. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna get this put into my muffin pan. And now you're gonna wanna use a jumbo size muffin pan for these. I mean, you could use a smaller one if you want, but I wanna make these super big and I just love the jumbo sizes. And now this pan right here, I really love the cone shape of this. It's the type of style of muffin that you would find like in a bakery or something. And I will leave a link to this pan if you're interested in using this type of pan in the description of this video. But you could really use any style of um, jumbo baking pan or you can just use the regular uh, 12 regular size muffin pan if you wanna make smaller muffins. But I'm gonna be using this one today and I'm gonna be making them jumbo size. And in here I have some of these muffin liners here. And I really absolutely just love this style. I wanna to try to get to my tan colored ones without really messing anything up if possible. But you know what? I think I'm just gonna stick with the white today because I really don't feel like digging down in there. So I'm just gonna use these really, really cute ones. This, like I said, the type of style that you would see in a bakery. I love this. And I'm gonna put this into my pan here. Okay, now the best way to add this to your pan is with a cookie scoop because the batter is so thick. Okay, now that I've got them in there, it, about two scoops is what I usually put into them. And uh, I just kind of press it down a little bit. And I'm gonna sprinkle these chocolate chips on top of them and I'm gonna press those into it as well. Okay, now I'm gonna stick these in the oven at 375 degrees for roughly 15 to 18 minutes. Now you might find, depending on your stove, that maybe you have to bake them a little bit less or a little bit more. So just kind of watch them. And I would suggest, you know, depending on how well they rise and stuff, I would suggest still covering them possibly because, because they're chocolate, you really can't tell that it's getting nicely browned and all that stuff. And like I said before in other videos, lupin flour tends to, um, you know, cook very fast. So 
I tend to still cover these even though they're chocolate, not for, you know, color wise, but for taste because I don't want to have that over cooked or in or even a burnt taste to them so i'm probably gonna let these cook about eight minutes or so until they're nice and they've risen up really nice and high and then i'm gonna go ahead and just gently lay a sheet of aluminum foil over it and let them continue cooking the rest of the way i will be back here when these are out of the oven to show you what we've got all right you guys they are done and they look absolutely amazing and they smell absolutely fantastic now the thing that i was warning about before about making sure you cover them um if you can tell i don't know if you can tell on this one but this one got a little bit too brown it was a little bit closer to the element in my little oven here and this is exactly what i was trying not to have so just remember at a certain point whenever your muffins get to a nice height you want to go ahead and cover them for the rest of the way now in my little oven over here I've never cooked them in there before but it cooked for 24 minutes in that so if you're gonna cook it in something like that make sure you be um, you remember that your time might be adjusted so I would probably say these muffins after doing them um, in this little oven probably are going to cook somewhere between 18 to 24 minutes depending on your stove So I'm going to go ahead and cut into one of these and show you guys the inside of the texture and all that And then I'm going to taste one for you my gosh look at that texture you guys it is so soft and it is so moist and so cake like and it just smells so 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 good you guys so i'm gonna go ahead and bite into this and tell you guys what i think Oh my word, these are so amazing. Oh my gosh, they're just absolutely perfect. Now, I like these muffins to not be so strongly sweet, like my, I don't know, me and overly sweet chocolate, I don't know, I just don't really like it uber, uber sweet. So make sure if you want your muffin to be a little bit sweeter to me, this is like the perfect sweetness. Um, but if you want it to be sweeter, then just adjust how much sweetener you add to it. But to me, this is absolutely perfect. Another thing is, if you want to um, boost up the chocolate flavor some more, because another thing is, I don't like things overly chocolate. So I would suggest uh, one of two things. You can add a fourth of a cup more of the um, cocoa powder and maybe subtract like whatever that weight is, subtract the weight of a fourth of a cup of cocoa powder from the um, wheat protein isolate. So just subtract that weight and then you'll have your weight for the wheat protein isolate because you don't want to add more uh, cocoa powder to this because the batter is already so thick. So you don't want to add anything extra. So you're going to need to balance it out. So I would definitely suggest if you want it to be stronger in chocolate, you can do that as an option, or you can just add a little bit of like some chocolate extract if you want. But to me, these are absolutely perfect as is, but this is all about making stuff to your taste. So you're going to want to do that, but look at how well these cupcakes, I mean, these muffins sit up. They're so nice and tall and they sit up so well they bake up so amazingly you guys the texture to me is great it's fabulous it's so perfect the nuts in there give it a nice little bite to it and then you get those nice little bursts of the chocolate chips so so good i dare say you can eat this for breakfast i'm so serious i would so that is going to be it for me today you guys i hope you guys make this and i hope you guys love it and enjoy it because these are absolutely fantastic i'm sorry i'm still chewing while trying to talk 
just a second. Okay, now that that's done, yeah, but make them. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you love them. They are absolutely fantastic. And I'm pretty certain you will definitely eat these for breakfast or as a snack after you've had your dinner, something like that. I think your kids will definitely love these because what's not to love about this? So that's all I've got for you guys today. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the nutritional facts for this in the description of today's video. So if you like this video, hit that like button for me. And if you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ding that little bell so you can get notifications every time I upload a new video. And until next time, you guys, bye.